Hello everyone, this is Ross, Teacher Toolkit. Uh, this is my first ever video that I'm going to post to my Facebook followers first of all. Uh, yes, I always sit at home in my red Teacher Toolkit t-shirt. Uh, not really. Uh, this is just a quick video uh, to kind of try something different, uh, speak to people that want to engage in, in terms of teaching. Um, so it's going to be very amateurish to begin with, it probably will all stay that way. Uh, but I just want to say a couple of things first before I kind of go into the video and the reasons what I would hope to share. Uh, firstly to Lee Parkinson who's inspired me to do this. If you're not following uh, Lee on Twitter, he is at ICT underscore Mr P, famous for all his ICT uh, kind of iPad work in primary schools, uh, that's Lee Parkinson, so please follow Lee and, and Lee thank you for the inspiration. Secondly to all the new teachers in the profession, uh, newly qualified teachers, you can now smile, all that stupid uh, kind of advice that we're given, uh, it's now Christmas, we've got a week to go, uh, it's the 10th of December today when I'm posting this, uh, so I've got another five days in school, some of you might have a little bit longer, but uh, when Christmas does arrive, I hope you have a wonderful time at home. More importantly to everybody who is working full time in schools, um, there's some research just come out uh, that suggests, uh, in fact it shouldn't really suggest, it's pretty obvious that it is critical that teachers relax and unwind over, the, uh, over the, any kind of break, never, never mind it being Christmas. So it's critical that you do relax, uh, take time to spend time with your, your families and your friends and enjoy the festive period. Uh, I know some assessments, mock exams tend to happen at this time, especially in secondary schools, and they tend to happen before Christmas. So fingers crossed they're all out of the way and you have a week or two still in school to mark those rather than have to do it over the Christmas period. But the reason I just want to share this, my first video, is if you do have to mark over Christmas, then I just want to give you five tips. Um, there's a blog that I've just written about, which, which is, is kind of a spin-off from other people, uh, Deputy Head Teacher Jeremy Hane, who works at the Three Bridges Primary, uh, which uh, his school claims to be the happiest school on the planet. Uh, so it's somewhere I'd like to work. Uh, but Jeremy's pushing the idea that there's no research yet to say that uh, written feedback is the, uh, is the number one. Uh, we know feedback is the thing that makes the greatest difference, but there's nothing to suggest that uh, written feedback is that thing. So uh, I'm pushing along with Jeremy, and I'm sure everyone else will soon join on uh, the verbal feedback train. Uh, please don't stamp. Uh, you can check out my views on that on my blog. But verbal feedback, and there's a great analogy on his blog that I've put on my blog, um, about a kind of uh, sports fixture story where the team are at half time, they're losing the game and they're wanting the coach to give some inspiration and he's writing down the, the written feedback and telling all the players what they should do next and the whistle goes and they go back out onto the pitch uh, and ultimately they lose the game and they get back in the changing room and they're a bit peed off with the coach um, and they kind of look at the verbal, the written feedback and they realise all the tactics that he would have given, or, the, or she, uh, was, was not incisive enough. And it essentially supports that the verbal feedback from the coach would have been more, uh, would have impacted on their performance on the pitch if it was given there and then. And that's exactly what we should be doing in the classroom, the verbal feedback instance so students can act on, 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 on their work. So uh, my first tip for everyone, if you do need to mark over the holiday period, is less written feedback, more verbal feedback. So if you have exams, then fair enough, you do need to mark them. Um, but if you've got some marking to do in school before the, you, the, you break up, uh, make it verbal. Uh, second tip, we hate this saying, we hear it a lot, especially on social media, work smarter, not harder. Now that's quite difficult to achieve. So I'm gonna give you a little tip. I use a visualizer in my classroom. Uh, I put the students work under the camera and I'm doing verbal feedback there and then. Uh, if I need to record anything written, students can see it on the whiteboard. Um, but a nice little approach in terms of approaching a lesson is uh, through modeling. So I do it first, we do it together, and then the students do it themselves. So I do, we do, you do. It's a fantastic strategy for encouraging a climate in your classroom where kids can work harder than you. So that's my second tip. Third tip, high challenge, low threat. This is a lovely analogy uh, from Mary Myatt. Uh, Mary I've worked with uh, for many years. Uh, she is fantastic, so if you're not following Mary on Twitter, please do. 
but uh, there's a nice uh, graph that's displayed on my blog uh, which is looking at challenge and versus uh, knowledge and skills and how if, if the challenge isn't pitched at the right level students become bored, if it's challenged too high it's a bit of a threat and students likely shut off, shut off also so it's a very uh, important point for teachers in terms of planning is to get the pitch right in their lessons. So in terms of feedback um, it's, it's, it's also something to make point of when you're writing feedback for students but also your verbal feedback. We, we pitched our feedback based on the students needs so it's important to keep that um, in mind as well. My fourth tip uh, the yellow box, uh, not my idea, uh, from a school, I forget the name, uh, it is on my blog, I apologise to that school, it will come back to me shortly. Um, yellow box, don't mark all the page, highlight one area that needs to be improved, draw an empty box, the, lo the, the size of the box determines how much work you want the students to feedback on, uh, sorry, to act upon. Uh, it's visual, it doesn't have to be yellow, but you're asking for the kids to improve their work, it might be from a a diagnostic question, it might be a spelling exercise, it might be some grammatical work um, for an essay. Uh, either way, it, it, it makes it instant. Uh, you can give students the opportunity to do it as a homework or in the lesson. I certainly wouldn't mark it again, but I would certainly look at it and give some verbal feedback to the student. I wouldn't stamp it. All I'm doing is stamping that for uh, uh, an, an SLT or an Ofsted inspector. It's absolute nonsense, don't waste your time. Uh, just a yellow box, written rec recorded feedback, you don't have to mark the whole piece of work, it's just a little zone that the students can act on and it's a visual check to see if they're actually doing what you ask them to do. The last tip, um, and I just realised I don't have the image with me, so never mind, it was going to be a, a book plug. I, uh, last week I put online my new book that's coming out, Mark, Plan, Teach. Um, I'm going to finish writing it over the holidays. Um, it's going to be online from February and published from next September. In a nutshell, it's 30 ideas from Mark Planning and Teaching. And what I look to, to do is uh, discuss ideas that I know work from my 23 years experience in the classroom. Uh, they'll be linked to some evidence-based research, which is not just the fashion, but it's important that teachers are working from evidence-based ideas. Um, and secondly, I bring in an expert, I'm not going to announce who it is at the moment, but a psychologist I've been working with, he kind of explains the ideas of why they work better than others uh, and what kind of tactics we use as teachers that we might not be aware of to make students do the things that we want them to do or the things that we give to the students, what makes them act upon the certain strategies that we put in the classroom. So that would be my last tip, so check that out on my blog. A couple of things I'm going to be reading over the Christmas period just to finish off. Uh, firstly, uh, one of the most controversial books of the latest year is The Battle Hymn of the Tiger Teachers. Uh, I'm only about two or three chapters through. Uh, I know a few others have already been uh, writing about it online, but uh, it's a very interesting book. Uh, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, lots of provocative ideas. So I'm going to put that on my blog over Christmas. That's, that's my education reading. Uh, something that I'm reading that's not related to teaching at all, although it is related to what I do as a teacher, How to Be Free. Uh, so this is a book by Tom Hodgenskin, which was recommended by a colleague who, uh, who now works part-time and is looking to do other things with his life. With all the demands that I have as Teacher Toolkit on Twitter, uh, for 23 years um, working in schools uh, in challenging situations in London, and the demands that I have as uh, a blogger, uh, I am considering going part-time in the future, so this is my first kind of public announcement. It's very early days, nothing's been confirmed. Uh, my colleagues don't even know yet, so if you're watching here, then you've just found out. But um, I'm looking to just go one day out so I can do a lot more things with schools across the country because I'm getting asked all the time. It's something I love to do in terms of teacher training, but I just can't get out and help people. Uh, so I'd like to try something different. So this book, uh, what the colleague that suggested to read it, he said once you read it after the weekend, you made a part-time request. So I've done it the other way around. I've made a part-time request and now I'm going to read the book, so I'm taking a risk. Um, so that's it. Um, I hope you like my first video. Please write some comments. 
uh, please send me some feedback. Uh, I'd happily blog about other things uh, here in this format if you think it's useful. Um, and maybe I'll put another one on over the next week or so then over Christmas. But um, I wish everyone watching uh, a very happy Christmas. Please get some rest. And if you like some of the ideas, please like this video and, and share it with your friends. Uh, so bye for now. This is Ross and I'll speak to you soon. Teacher Toolkit, one of the most followed teachers on Twitter in the UK. Find out more at teachertoolkit.me.